Magalinette e Nana cosa fanno? Mal di mangiate queste? No, vabbè. No, no, sì, per... sono solo così per... Sono buone però queste. Sì. Galinette e Nana? Sì. Italian Wine Podcast. Cin Cin with Italian Wine People. Welcome to On the Road with Stevie Kim. In this episode, Stevie drops in at Montecchi, a family winery from the Lugana DOC Consortium, not far from Verona, tasting their award-winning bio-organic wine, which scored 95 points at the 2022 Five Star Wines and Wine Without Walls selection. Hi, everybody. So this is a very special On the Road edition. It's for Five Star Wines, which is a wine competition of the Italy International Wine Competition, um, which takes place just prior to Vinitaly. And this year we are touring, actually today we're touring, we're giving a little bit of love to Lugana, Consorzio di Lugana, because they were our supporters for the Vinitaly International Academy. So we've chosen a few uh, cantinas today. And today the first Cantina winery we have chosen is called Montecchi. 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 And they won a, an, an award, um, 95 points, with the Lugana dog. It, it is a organic wine, which we'll talk about. And we're here today with Francesco. Nice so, to meet you. So, Francesco, what, what is your family's name? Oh, my family's name, the surname of our family is Righetti. So, why, is your, why is your winery called Montecchi when Montecci you're Righetti? Montecchi because uh, it's the nickname of my family. You know, ah. when, I was, uh, when I was young, really young, I used to have a walk in the countryside and the people asked, used to ask me, are you a Montecchi? I say, no, I'm Francesco. Who is that Montecchi? So that was a funny story to say because our surname in Verona area is, is not very original, you say. So uh, we decided to call the winery Montecchi. Uh, it's more characteristic for us. Uh, it's, uh, it's something ours, not someone else. Oh, I, that, that's so odd. So first of all, where are we? Where is your winery located? Uh, we are in Pescantina. We are, uh, where is Pescantina for, for our audience? Maybe Pescantina, we are less familiar with this area. In the middle between Verona city and Garda Lake. So, it's a beautiful place close to, to the bank of the Adige River. And it's a lovely place. Uh, come to visit us if you, if you want. We have a beautiful So winery. would you like to just tell me uh, a little bit about your family? Is everybody, how many family members are involved in the wine business? A lot. We a are lot. a lot of people, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I represent uh, the fifth generation. Right. Uh, but I I'm, I'm follow the, the technical area. I'm winemaker. But we have my sister, my brother, my three, my cousins, my auntie, my uncle. We are uh, the big part of the, the winery is uh, composed by our family. Oh, and do you guys all get on? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you Always. have to. I guess you have to say that. Um, so, Francesco, tell me a little bit about the the organic side of the winery. So first of all, give us, contextualize a little bit. How big is the winery? How many labels do you do? How many wines do you do? Okay, um, as I said before, I'm, I represent the fifth generation of the family. So everything started in 1925, so almost 100 years ago. But we decided to jump in the middle of the organic world in the 2014. The 14 was a very difficult vintage for Italy, first of all, but in Europe in general. And we decided to make an experiment of organic experiment of 10 hectares. And that Out of was, how many in total? Uh, we have around 200 hectares. Mm -hmm. And so we decided to... A vines. Yes, everything a vines. Um, the result was very beautiful in a difficult vintage. So in the 2015, we decided to, to jump in the organic world with the three years of conversion. So 15, 16 and 17. So we are officially organic since the 2019, 18, sorry, from the 18. Uh, we produce uh, around 15 labels um, and we are very proud to, to have this, this kind of uh, awards for uh, the Lugana because there is not a lot of winery that produce organic in the, in the Lugana area. How many uh, producers are there in the Lugana, pr producers um, making Lugana? Uh, you know? It's difficult to say because we have, uh, there are 
some winery that produce and bottling the wine. There is just uh, people that produce grapes, uh, just people that sell grapes, just winery that buy grapes. Uh, so it's difficult to say how many winery we have in Lugana. Uh, I, I guess something like um, around 100. Yeah, I guess I'll ask that to the the new president of the consortium today, um, Francesco. So. Out of the, why, who chose to, um, who decided to transform your winery into an organic winery? Because now it's completely organic, is that correct? Yes. I mean, it's, it seems very ambitious to have 200 hectares were completely organic. Yeah. Was, was that difficult? It, you know, it's, uh, you have to change your mind. You have to change your organization. You have to to use a lot of your energy for, uh, to be ready when it's time to, to go out in the field for protect the, the vineyards. Um, we decide more or less all together. We used to have a, a reunion, family reunion every week. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was just an idea and, uh, and it's happened. Uh, it's, uh, we are 100% organic, but this is uh, not completely true because every year we buy some land and so we are in conversion with our oh, okay. with, with some. You're still expanding. Yes, absolutely. So. What were the major changes, significant changes that you've made during the conversion, both in the vineyards but also in winemaking? Um, I used to to explain the the word of organic to the people in this way. Um, it's like to protect yourself with the medicine, or you cover yourself in the winter time. Um, you know, with the systemic system, you just spread the, the trees and there is the, the, the trees absorb this, uh, the protection. In the organic way, you have to try to protect the wine with the treatment that they protect the, the trees from outside. So it's something that more respect more the, the field, the nature, the, the world. And it's a, it was a huge satisfaction for me and for us to see how fireflies come back to the vineyard in the summertime. It was, uh, I think, more than... Fireflies. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's something when I was a child, when I remember this, uh, this, this beautiful uh, uh, sensation to see the fireflies uh, in, in, the, in the night summertime. And they're, they're back, you know. Uh, we, we create new labels for the biodiversity and we discover new insects, new animals, they are back in the vineyards. Every year we try to make the plantation all around our vineyards with uh, oak, with uh, acres, with uh, other, other trees to protect the vineyards. You know, gives uh, mm, the natural protection to the, to, the, to the vineyards. You know, the birds, the insects, uh, some kind of uh, animals, they come back and protect itself, you know. So what, what are the major challenges nowadays going forward with organic farming and um, organic winemaking? So what, is, what are your biggest challenges now? Is it the climate change? Is it something else? It's difficult to say because uh, every year something changes. You know, can you see a uh, pandemic in one way or what in another way? So, uh, the market is changing, uh, but for me, the, the classical sentence that say less is more is evergreen for me. You know, uh, if you respect the wine, if you respect the nature, if you respect the trees, uh, the right moment to, to, pick, pick, to pick the grapes, to have the harvest, uh, they give it back something. You know, it's, uh, it's something that if you respect, uh, they give you respect to you. So. We, we try to be more natural as possible on our mentality and our wine as well. Okay, so now uh, let's just quickly taste your wine, the, the uh, award-winning wine. Would you like to tell us a little bit about that? Okay, so this is uh, our Lugana 2021. It uh, was a beautiful vintage, you know, a little bit in late respect to the 2020, so the, um, the vintage before. Um, this is Trebbiano di Lugana, or the local people say Turbiana. Right. It's a, it's a beautiful variety. And the, the sensation of this wine, first of it's all, you can see... It's 100% Turbiana. Absolutely, yes. 100% Lugana. 
As you can see, the color is a very nice light gold color. And, but for me, the most important characteristic of this wine is, uh, first of all, the flavors. There is a beautiful wedding between flavors of fruits and flowers. So I love to, to feel uh, the, the yellow rose or between the, the lychees or the, the ananas, the mango, the peach, apple. I just want everybody to know it's half past 10, so the breakfast of champions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't provide me with this spittoon, so, okay. Um, in the mouth, the tasting is um, the minerality of the wine, well-balanced acidity with the soft part of the wine, nice persistent of the, of the, of the wine in the mouth. So I think it was a, a great work for us to, do, to produce this wine. So is this typical of a Lugana, would you say, or at least the house Lugana? Is this very representative from um, previous vintages? Um, I think so, yeah. Similar? I think um, I, I found uh, in the last four vintages uh, um, a connection of, you know, the difference of the vintage is uh, something that we have it. But, you know, the style, we can, we can try to keep this kind of style, you know. The, the variety is that one, so if you have a, a slow fermentation for uh, develop a beautiful flavor like theolic sensation and uh, ester sensation, um, they can recognize this style. Uh, and how much one. does a wine like this cost in retail? Because we're talking to the consumers. <clears throat> it's it's a, around the 15... 15 yeah, euros. 15 euro, yeah. more or less, yes. Great. So uh, just one last question before we go. I know you make also sparkling wines. Yes. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? I love sparkling wine, first of all. Because it's not very common in this area, no, right? Absolutely not. Why, when yeah. did you start and why did you start producing sparkling wine? So we are in the Valpolicella, the art of Valpolicella. So here the red wine is the must. And we are here for a white. So it's a big goal for, for me and for us. And uh, I because really you're, you're most of your production is by Policella. Yes, ninety percent. Yeah, ninety yeah. percent. How many sparkling wines do you? We, make? we produce five different sparkling wine: one rosé and four whites. No, you know it's uh, small numbers uh, with, uh, with, but give us satisfaction. I didn't found uh, some easier to to taste the uh, wine uh, ten years on the yeast. Uh, and so it's a big satisfaction. And we are thinking something about the classic meat for the Lugana as well. So That's interesting. we are studying to how we select the base for produce the classic meat. Because the harvest of the Lugana is a late harvest for the white wines, because we start in the middle of August with the Pinot Grigio, and we are going to pick the Lugana after one month. So we have to pick the grapes when it's not still ready. So yeah, because it, you need the acidity. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. not the completely mature of the, the grapes. Uh, you have to, to harvest the grapes uh, one, two weeks before, 10 days. Uh, every, every vintage is different. But we are thinking about that. Okay, great. Sounds exciting. So, uh, Francesco, would you like to say one last thing to, um, to our audience? about Lugana or, or your winery or yourself, anything. What would you like to say? Uh, One last thing you'd like to... Last thing to say about the Lugana is a beautiful place. I think the people, uh, they can understand the, the Lugana if they come here to, to visit the Garda Lake area. It's a beautiful place. There is a lovely weather. There is a beautiful people around, tourists, uh, people that uh, come here for a holiday. And you can uh, have a huge satisfaction when you drink a glass of the Lugana, sit and you see the Garda Lake and maybe eat some fish. Uh, why not from the lake? Maybe some, something and, to enjoy. And the day. Francesca, how can people get in touch with you? Like, what is your social media handles? Okay, so you can find us in uh, Montecci on the Instagram, on Facebook. Uh, and, it's just Montecci. Uh, yes. Okay. Montecci good. Viticoltori is ah, the okay. correct Montecci name. Montecci Viticoltori. Montecci Viticoltori. Not just Montecci. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Thank Cheers. you for your Cheers. visit. Cheers. And see you next year. And that's a wrap. Tune in next time as Stevie continues her deep dive into Lugana DOC tasting and touring along the shores of Lake Garda. For more fascinating interviews from the world of wine, go to italianwinepodcast.com or find us on SoundCloud, Spotify, Jimalaya, or wherever you get your pods. Chin chin, and thanks for listening. <laughs>